If you're interested in learning Python, I'm going to start from the first lesson on Code Academy. Let's get started. So if you want to teach a computer to talk, you use the print statement. No, 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 no. If you want to tell the computer to print text, you use the print statement. And it's procedural. And what I mean by that is if I do print fish, and I do print cat, it's going to start at the top of my file and print this, and then it's going to print that. So the output of this looks looks like this. Ta da fish and cat. So I mean it's the statement is print, which is a function, and that's why there are parentheses. And it takes the argument of whatever you want to say. Hello. Run. Pretty swifty. I think we all get this, yeah? Print, is, it's kind of like the statement, but it's, a, it's called a function. And that's why there are these parentheses. And then it takes the argument of a string. That's why we have, in quotes, something. If it's in quotes, it's a string. So we could also do print like 1. But I strongly recommend you don't do that because print's supposed to take string arguments, not integer arguments. <laughs> but it works. <laughs> it would be better, though, to typecast and say it is a string. Technically, that's the clean way to do it. But don't worry about that just yet. This screen, they're trying to tell you that there's a difference between Python 2 and 3, and they're correct. But the difference is really small and really not that noticeable, except for the print statement. Back in the day, if you were writing on Python 2, which I discourage at this point, write on Python 3. But if you were to write on Python 2, you could do print i, and that would run fine. Um, but these days, if you were to try that, it would barf out saying, you forgot your parenthesis. So it's a function. Treat it like a function. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, th and there, there are definitely other differences in Python 2 and 3, but especially starting out, you're not going to notice any of them except for print. Next. Okay, so we're going over strings in this screen, which I kind of already did, but let's go over it a little bit more. Um, that's, that's a statement. It's a function because it has these parentheses, and in quotes is a string. In Python, it's totally valid to have a floating string like this. You could just have that as a line. It doesn't do anything, but it's valid. You can also combine strings with the plus symbol. So hello plus space u. And let's do it. Let's go ahead and print this. Print. Let's run it. So yeah, you can do that, and there are reasons you'd want to add strings like this. So you're, you're going to want to use this every time you use variables and you want to combine them together. For example, let's go over a little bit of variables. So in Python, you can store anything, basically, in a variable. And a variable looks like this. Test gets and then something, info. So now, test will reference info. What does that mean? It means if I put test right here, it's the equivalent of me putting info right here. So that line and that line are equally worthless 
to the program. It's like, here's a floating string that does nothing. Here's another floating string that does nothing. Print hello, and then print this shit. Let's say you want to store something else. You could store a integer, like one, or two, or 7.3, which is now a float or a double, because it's got a decimal, it's no longer an integer. Or whatever the whatever you really want here. You can have a string of symbols. You could name me. Let's just do name gets David. Then we'll do hello plus name. This line is worthless. Run that. That's the most common use case for the plus. Set up the variable, use it later in the program. And let's move on. Okay, so debugging is actually pretty important. Um, and Python has pretty good error messages. So let's go ahead and run this. Barfs. This has actually happened to me maybe a couple thousand times. It's complaining because this character and this character, the start and stop string, have to be the same. So a valid way to do this would either be single quote and end single quote, or start double quote and end double quote. And the reason you'd want to do this is if you want to have a single quote inside of your text, you can do it just like that. Or if you want to have double quotes inside your text, you can do it just like that. Now, if you want to have both, you'll have to use an escape character, which is the backslash. Basically, that means treat the following character differently. And then you can use the same single or double quote inside of your text. Now, let's go ahead and run this you can see the single quote is right there. So yeah, you can do either of those things. Next. All right, so let's do a bit more on variables. Name gets David, age gets 24. And then let's do print name plus David is plus H plus years old. We got the standard print statement, which we're all accustomed to, and the argument we're going to give it is actually this. And this is going to be executed and turned into a single string before it's passed into print. So this is the string logic. We're saying the name plus is plus the stringerized version of age plus years old. Now the reason you have to do the str around this is because it's an integer. And you can't say, here's this string, plus here's this integer, plus here's this string. You have to say string plus string plus string, or integer plus integer plus integer, which is going to be totally different maths. For example, um, 2 plus 2 is not 4 if it's a string. But if it's an integer, it comes out as 4. So Typecasting is important. Let's say we have strings and we want to treat them like integers. We can just by wrapping them with the int, just like we can wrap with a the str if we want strings. So int2 plus int2 is 4. Or we can do the vice versa where we have str of 2 plus str of 2 is 22. That's, that's typecasting and variables. Yeah, we did better than this this one slide. So let's go to next. Ugh. Where did you pop up? Next. 
oh, I actually have to do something. Create a variable called today's date and assign a value that will represent today's date to that variable. Okay. Um, to today's date. And let's go to Linux for a second. Uh, where's my console? Console, console, console. Here it is. Date. Gets. I gotta save it, huh? Obey. Paste. Run. Well, seem to like that, so moving on. <laughs> it's just an arbitrary string. We could have put potato in there and it would have moved on, but that's okay. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. It's going over uh, how you can uh, do addition here and store the result of Python 3. And we can do some subtraction on results and we can do multiplication store that we can do some division and store that uh, we could do really long nasty looking things store that um, now interesting thing on the command line Python, which is the real version if you were doing this on the command line. If you run a variable with no arguments, it's going to print back what's in that variable. It's very useful and doesn't really do anything, but here's what I mean. If I, if I just type in a variable name, it's going to spit that out. Um, you can store that into a new one just like that. So now if I do new var, they're, they're equal. I can even do um, one gets new var divided by that old one. Oh, and what I did, did just there is tab completion. Command line does have tab completion of variable names and function names. So now if we do one, we get one. So, yeah, you can do that. Um, in their examples, they're just storing results. Oh, they're going over modulus. Modulus is pretty cool. Um, I guess that means we have to go over integer division versus regular division. So let's do that now. It's where you divide something and you get a integer back, but an integer doesn't have decimals, so instead of returning 1.6, if you typecast it to an int, it's going to concatenate. Is that the right word? No. It's going to truncate your variable. So if it's 1.9, it's still going to be just 1. But if it's 2.1, it's going to be 2. Where's this 0.6 blah 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 blah? Well. It's, you can find that with modulus, kind of, so... Oh, don't do that. If we do, let's do their example, 15 modulus 2, which will print 1. So you divide 15 by 2, you're going to have a leftover of 1, because 15 is not divisible by 2. 14 is divisible by 2 or any even number. And then the remainder is zero. So if you want remainders, you use modulus. And that's actually pretty useful in certain scenarios. Okay, instructions. Multiply two numbers together and assign the result to a variable called product. Okay, well, copy product, right there, gets, how does it even know if I'm doing anything that it asks? It says one times two or three is an acceptable group like thing. But what, what's just does this work? Does this count? I 
just trying to be an ass, basically. I have to do the second part, too. So um, it wants these numbers specifically. that's a lame program that's a cooler program hey look there's actually data cool I'm bored and tired so let's do this another day it's fun though right